tonight, Port Lincoln Racing Club in hot water following allegations of financial mismanagement. And the region doubling the amount of paid time off for victim survivors of family and domestic violence. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with Madeline Kerr begins now. Good evening, thanks for joining us. Well, it's worrying news for Port Lincoln race goers with the racing club hit with a scandal. It's alleged several governance practice and financial management issues led the entire committee to resign. Our reporter Henry Millick has the details from the track. Well, it hasn't been an easy trot for Port Lincoln Racing. First, it was the season delays due to track issues. Now, board members have handed in their resignation. This comes after several members flagged questions about governance practices and the management of finances. In a letter and documents obtained by Seven Spencer Gulf News, one of the concerns highlighted was the club's miscellaneous expenses come race day. In the documents, the club responded to 22 questions about its spending. When asked what constitutes sundry expenses on race day, the club says it refers to things like name badges, face masks and sanitizer. The document also states that $9,000 went towards styling expenses for cup function marquees in 2021. In total, the documents released by the Port Lincoln Racing Club states they spent over $31,000 on sundry expenses last year. According to the same documents sent to all club members, the club says it spent an additional $9,000 on travel, including flights for the administration manager and the property manager training in Morfitt Vale. The document adding that some of that money was spent on buses getting from Port Lincoln Airport to the race course. The club is facing more than just financial concerns. One member questioning the club as to why no fungal treatment was applied to the track in 2021. The club responded by saying it had not been included in the track maintenance plan. However, there was a record of a fungicide application made on May 5th. The club has since engaged with a new track consultant. Racing SA, also aware of the situation, saying they are monitoring the situation closely and will be working with the Port Lincoln Racing Club's administration to help them in delivering a special general meeting on the 14th of October. Not the news racegoers wanted to hear, but as for now, Port Lincoln Racing is still set to return after the Melbourne Cup on November the 2nd. Maddie? Family and domestic violence leave provisions will be doubled in Broken Hill and the rest of New South Wales for public sector workers. The government announced that from January 1, staff will be able to access 20 days of paid leave per calendar year. Full-time workers won't be the only ones to access the leave. Casual workers will also be provided the same provisions. Existing carers' leave is set to be extended to all employees, providing support to a family or household who is a survivor of domestic violence as well. The enhanced arrangements will apply across the New South Wales public sector. The decision came about after discussions with unions, government employers and domestic violence policy experts. Minister for Women's Safety and the Prevention of Domestic Violence, Natalie Ward said the increase of family and domestic violence leave was a key priority of the Perite government. Minister for Employee Relations, Damien Tudhope, has said that the new leave provisions build on other family and safety orientated measures that are already in place for all public sector workers. A study done in 2021 on domestic violence across local government areas in the state found that Broken Hill is in the top five for reported domestic violence, with 1,310 per a 100,000 population. Walgut well, has the highest across the state with 2,335. The improved family and domestic violence leave entitlement builds on the state government's $687 million investment in 2021-2022 on a range of women's safety initiatives. The New South Wales Domestic Violence Line is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for support. Joshua Mercer reporting there. Work is continuing at Wyala's new community hub, affectionately known as The Nest. The City Council says the installation of the new facility is a chance to provide a space that can continually evolve to meet the needs of the community. Setting up another usable space for Wyala. The City Council is encouraging local creatives and event organisers to start thinking of ways to use their new community hub in Wyala Norrie. 
designed to bring all those artisans that we have spread throughout Wyala into one location for visitors and locals to really enjoy the best of Wyala. The pod structure has been installed in a vacant lot on the outskirts of Westland Shopping Centre. Which was once a wasted precinct and to try and capitalise on the surrounding energy that we have in the library and the Mount Laura Homestead Museum and Westland Shopping Centre. It's a creative space we've, we've nicknamed The Nest. Made possible by $350,000 of funding from the Australian Government. The space has been designed with a large open plan indoor area and undercover decking outside. Really hope it's the community pitching those ideas and, and bringing forward their, their concepts for how we might activate it. We'd like to see it as a changing space, so, so not, not one offering, constantly changing so that we have something new for visitors and locals to interact with regularly. Council says crews have been working hard to put the final touches on the facility so it can be up and running by the end of the year. With all these stories that we can bring and curate and maybe have, have travelling exhibitions and we can use the nest to do that. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. An RAA poll of more than 5,000 motorists has revealed what South Australians believe are the most annoying traffic offences. Tailgating was the most annoying behaviour in the state, accounting for 27% of the 5,000 votes cast. Failing to keep left and less overtaking accounted for 17% of the complaints, while failing to indicate came in at 14% and failing to merge at 9%. The RAA reminding drivers these behaviours can result in a costly fine with latest figures showing more than 5,000 motorists have been pulled over by police for tailgating, resulting in $1.32 million worth of fines during the past two financial years. Still to come tonight, the New South Wales government pours millions of dollars into revolutionising household food waste. And we take a look at the all-new administration building and classrooms at Wyala's Sunrise Christian College. Welcome back. Earlier this year, Broken Hill City Council received $10,000 from the state government to educate the community about food organics and waste organics. FOGO for short, it was part of the Scrap Together FOGO education campaign, aiming to ensure food waste was properly disposed of. Now the New South Wales government has a new $46 million grants program for councils. More than 210,000 tonnes of organic waste has been disposed of annually using the program since 2013. The government also now investing in an infrastructure program, increasing the capacity for food and garden waste by 60,000 tonnes a year. GoFogo will process waste into compost to be used in large-scale agriculture, parks or gardens where it can improve soil and boost yields. Port Augusta City Council's meeting this month saw mounting tensions between councillors as the local government elections edge ever closer. It was the first meeting in caretaker mode, with management admitting the city doesn't have the money to prevent major storm damage from the one we saw a few weeks ago. Port Augusta City Council's September meeting was the first time councillors and Mayor Brett Benbow had gathered after nominations closed for council and the mayoralty. The fallout from the September storm was a main discussion point from Lindley Shine, who is challenging the Mayor for his position. What do we need to do to go forward to ensure that we actually, we actually have got the resourcing available to be able to go ahead and overcome this? Because this is the second time in such a short period of time that this has happened to community. And there's probably been four occasions at least that I've actually gone ahead and brought this up. The council CEO admitting there isn't enough money to put in place more precautions. To be very clear, we do not have the financial capacity to prevent events such as occurred recently this month and uh, back in January. Meanwhile, Deputy Mayor Philip Brown questioned the effectiveness of alcohol restrictions in Port Augusta. I want to see where the data is and what the data is. Where's the results? We all do know that a, uh, there's a lot of people in this city from out of town and also some people within the city, local people that have uh, alcohol issues and for them to wait till 11 o'clock can cause other issues. 
Postal ballots will be sent out in three weeks' time. 13 candidates going for nine seats in council, plus the mayor's race. Campaigning is heating up. Daniel Pizarro, 7 Spencer Golf News. Now in its 13th year of operation, Wyala's Sunrise Christian School has expanded its learning facilities yet again. Today the school celebrated the completion of the new building that will provide a first-class learning experience to their ever-growing cohort. A growing school to help growing minds. <laughs> While the Sunrise Christian School holding an official opening ceremony today. We were very privileged to uh, host our, the official building opening of our new administration and classroom precinct. Uh, it was great to have Mr Rowan Ramsey uh, from the Commonwealth Government here today. You can't walk through here today and not be impressed with not only the physical, um, the physical attributes of the school but of the way the, the children and the staff present as well. The building giving middle school students more space to learn. The staff area has also been expanded, with the all-important coffee machine now in place to keep them going. And so in this building uh, we've got administration areas and we have four brand new classrooms, uh, which we've really needed uh, to help accommodate the growth of the school. It started off as a pretty small, dusty little outfit and now they've over 300 kids, uh, first class facilities. The site of the school has been through many changes over the years. Now with all the new buildings, you couldn't tell it was once home to the city's drive-in movie theatre. The member for Grey says the Commonwealth Government has always provided grants to the school since its humble beginning. But he says majority of the investment comes from the generous school community. The school has in 13 years grown from 30 odd to now, including our ELC, over 300. So that's tremendous growth and I think it's just a sign that, uh, that this is a, a really great community, family orientated place to be. Edwin McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break, a new mural to be painted in Port Augusta, plus details on the city's sculpture competition. And I'll chat with the newly appointed Vice President of the Broken Hill Basketball Association ahead of the new season. Welcome back. Some good news for our viewers in far west New South Wales. Water is back to normal in Broken Hill. Workers from Essential Water managing to repair the damage caused by lightning following Wednesday's storms. In an email, Head of Essential Water Ross Berry said the team worked all day yesterday to fix the problem and will continue to monitor the situation. Adding that the water quality wasn't impacted by the incident and has thanked the community for their understanding during the emergency repairs. Port Augusta's increasingly colourful landscape is getting a new addition with the latest mural expected to be announced next month. Meanwhile, the city is calling on budding sculptures to get prepared for a major art competition next year. This blank wall on the old Yacht Club building won't be blank for much longer. Port Augusta City Council saying a new mural is coming. We're just in the process of reviewing those at the moment. The project's a collaborative project between Rotary, Coast Care and the Port Augusta Council uh, and the mural will be up by the 31st of October. It comes after the completion of the latest mural in Stirling North and will form the upcoming mural walk to bolster tourism in the city. Meanwhile, Council is calling for works for next year's sculpture competition with a grand prize of $20,000 to be awarded to the winner. But there are a few rules participating artists must follow. They need to fit in with the theme of 50% either renewable uh, or natural resources or 50% recycled uh, resources to build their sculpture. The exhibition will be open to the public from Easter next year and spread across the city. Have a cut-off date of the 28th of February to submit applications and that gives us a bit of time to get things ready and uh, some brochures and promotional stuff to happen before the exhibition opens. Another splash of colour and art for the Jewel of the North. Daniel Pizarro, 7 Spencer Golf News. Some new faces have joined the Broken Hill Basketball Association after the organisation's recent AGM. Those who have joined are excited for the upcoming season and keen to inject some fresh ideas into the sport locally. 
ready for a new season. Those on board the basketball train are ready to implement their visions and they're looking forward to overcoming any challenges that may pop up. Uh, unfortunately, we had a few people, um, you know, uh, not joined back on the AGM, I mean, on the executive, but sprang some new blood in with some new ideas and it's, it's nice and refreshing, to be honest. They will be looking at using more technology, whether that be for scoring games or for payments at the canteen and player registration. And while it may not happen straight away, they are putting the steps in place. We want to try, try to modernise the, the, the running of the association, to be honest, like get into to using iPads for score sheets, um, using apps and stuff like that for, uh, for pay payments, uh, payments. The executive group will also look to bring representative games back into the spotlight, with coaching directors set to build programs for those players and hopefully some upgrades to the facilities. Trying to, uh, one of the major things we're trying to do is have a look at getting some grants to, uh, to, to spruce up the, uh, the courts and the, and the stadium a bit because she's getting a little bit old and, and raggedy. A huge number of teams have nominated for the season, which gets underway on October 17. And for the first time in eight years, there will be three divisions in the senior men's comp. We've had 114 teams nominate, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, we run over four nights, which is over 50 games being played each week. Joshua Mercer, 7, Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. A trip down memory lane, we explore a hidden gem in Port Lincoln with centuries worth of history. And we'll have the weekend weather details with Alex Sykes. Welcome back to 7, Spencer Golf News. It's one of Port Lincoln's hidden gems and an iconic part of the township's history. Mill Cottage Museum is home to two centuries worth of history and now locals can wander through the old dwelling, all free of charge. If only these walls could talk. Mill Cottage, originally built as a farmhouse by the Bishop family in 1866, now the landscape has changed into what is known as Flinders Park. We do have photographs from the early days. The family, fortunately, were quite keen on photography. Um, and we've got photos of how the park that the cottage is set in um, used to be a working farm. The Paul Lincoln History Group preserving the family's belongings, laying out the house as it would have looked all those years ago. We have a very special bed in there now, which belonged to Amy Bishop, the last person who lived here in the cottage. Pieces of cupboards, pieces of curtain rails created the bed. Additionally, three rooms of the cottage are made up of items gathered from the Pioneers and Descendants group, showcasing an old collection dating back to the Queen's visit. We've even got um, replicas of the Queen's, um, or the outfits that the children wore when the Queen visited uh, Port Lincoln in 1954. The history group hopeful to showcase the museum to locals and reconnect them with a part of history is to give local people the opportunity to come up uh, free of charge and have a look through, see what is in here. Its free open days will run this Sunday, September 25th from 2 until 4 and on Wednesday the 28th between 10am until 2pm. All are welcome. Henry Millick, 7 Spencer Golf News. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather with Alex Sykes. Alex, it was incredibly humid in Wyala this morning. It certainly was, Maddie. The humidity was 100% for several hours overnight, and before that, it was in the 90s. Temperature wise, Port Augusta 22 degrees this afternoon. The Steel City reached 17.9, 20 degrees in Port Piri with a few showers throughout the day. Elsewhere, Cooper Pedy was our warmest centre today, 30 degrees, 21 in Broken Hill, just 17 in Wyala today, even cooler in Port Lincoln, reaching 14 degrees. Taking a look at the south satellite image now a high pressure system south of the bight will move steadily eastwards tomorrow while more high pressure centers are expected to form south of the bight mid next week moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the gulf waters southeasterly winds 10 to 15 knots turning east to northeasterly during the morning seas below a meter and south to southwesterly swell around a meter increasing to two meters taking a look at the forecast for grand final day now partly cloudy in port lincoln 
Lincoln on Saturday set to reach a high of 17 degrees. Cloud clearing around Cleve 19, mostly sunny in Woodnar 23. Mostly sunny in Wowler as well between 8 and 19 degrees there. Cloud clearing around Port Augusta 23. Kadena mostly sunny and 18 tomorrow. Should be perfect weather to kick the footy at half time in Port Piri. Cloudy Cloudy, clear, cloudy conditions clearing and set to reach a high of 20 degrees there. Clay will be mostly sunny and 17 and Broken Hill will be partly cloudy and 20 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now, starting with Sunday's forecast. And as you can see from the icons on the screen, it will get a bit wet, but you won't be cold. Showers and 27 degrees in Port Augusta, 27 in Broken Hill. Showers in Port Piri heading for a top of 25 degrees, 24 in Woodna, 20 23 in Wyala, Port Lincoln heading for a top of 18 degrees. Moving on to Monday's outlook now and the wet weather is set to hang around into the working week and the temperatures will drop in most of our major centres. A drizzly top of 24 in Broken Hill, 19 in Port Augusta and Port Pirie, showers and 18 in Wyala, 17 in Port Lincoln and Kadena. And finally taking our first look at Tuesday's forecast, more of the same to be honest Maddie, showers just about everywhere, temperatures between 17 and 18 degrees. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. I'll see you soon with an update. It's back to you, Maddie. Thanks for that, Alex. Have a great weekend. And that's the local news this Friday. I'm Madeline Kerr. From all of us here, thanks for joining us. I'll have updates a little later, but until then, enjoy your evening and I'll see you Monday. Good night.